and they're very dangerous because the players, uh, many of the players, are uh, nuclear powers and, um, and and are to be reckoned with. And our, and our chief competitor for oil, I may add, down the road will be China. And uh, I think uh, they're starting to distance themselves from the United States uh, as as their own supplies of oil uh, become increasingly constricted and as we become uh, as they become more of a competitor for us for the same res- That's resource. That's a scary visual there, John, a meth addict with his finger on the button. <clears throat> well, it's uh, again, I'll let our uh, guests uh, ad- address that issue, but uh, uh, that's that's what it reminds me of. We're that kind of, uh, you know, f- jumpy, irrational, desperation-driven addict-type behavior. We're addicted to oil. It's that simple. Would you like to see what our first guest has to say about that? Absolutely. Our first guest is uh, Reese Ehrlich, um, Mr. Ehrlich is a um, is an author and a foreign correspondent. He has written a book called The Iran Agenda, The Real Story of U.S. Policy in the Middle East. Uh, Mr. Ehrlich uh, said uh, recently, and I quote, the U.S. has been involved in clandestine and terror attacks against Iran and Iraq for some time. I reported on the Iran-Iraq border war, on the activities of U.S.-funded Kurdish group PJAK, and my investigative story appeared in Mother Jones. Seymour Hersh's article, and he's referring to the one in the, in the New Yorker that uh, broke uh, last week, simply upstates the continued illegal activities of the United States in an effort to overthrow the Iranian government. The Bush administration appears prepared to go out in a blaze of glory. Mr. Ehrlich, I welcome you to our show. Thank you very much. How should we start off, Mr. Ehrlich? T- tell our uh, listeners how bad it is. <laughs> well, you were talking about the methamphetamine addict with his finger on the trigger. Uh, not only that, he's in denial. <laughs> he, there is no problem. Um, what the situation, um, I've uh, reported from Iran uh, three times, twice from Iraq. Um, and, you know, it's quite fascinating. If at the beginning of the, prior to the U.S. invasion and occupation of Iraq, uh, if you said this war is going to be all about oil, you were called a conspiracy theorist, you were called some kind of a nutcase left-winger. I went back to Washington, and I interviewed former ambassadors, diplomats, State Department officials, uh, corporate executives, and others. And uh, I said, why are we interested in Iraq or in Iran? And the first response in every single case was oil. Um, not in the sense that the war is uh, in to enable Chevron Texaco to go and uh, expand its profits, although that will certainly uh, happen, uh, but it's because the way they think of it in Washington is you've got to secure the oil, long-term oil supplies of the United States. Uh, there's no such thing as conservation or reducing reliance on oil. It's assumed that the U.S. Uh, for the entire, uh, for infinity, will be dependent, uh, will need oil, and therefore you have to uh, secure oil fields uh, for use by the U.S. In order to do that, therefore you have to have uh, military bases and aircraft carriers, and uh, you have to have compliant governments that are uh, willing to make sure that that oil uh, flows to the United States, and pretty soon you have an empire. Um, And that's, of course, exactly what's going on in Iraq. Uh, When the five uh, former companies of Iraqi national, the uh, old uh, of, uh, Western uh, oil company uh, signed a secret deal with the Iraqis to start the preliminary steps for exploration. It was reintroducing Western oil companies into Iraq in a way that they had never, hadn't been for 50 years. Uh, that's the long-term goal in the, uh, for Iran as well, which is that if the U.S. could get a, a Shah, you know, a king like used to run the store, store before, back in power, uh, that would be the ultimate goal for the U.S. because that then supposedly at least guarantees oil supplies for the future. Well, those were the good old days, weren't they? When we had the <laughs> when we had the Shah of Iran as as an American puppet and yeah. uh, and Saddam for that matter too. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Saddam. And Saddam Hussein, who was That's also right. uh, basically on the CIA's payroll. Um, I uh, I uh, I don't know where to begin. Um, wh- I guess I guess the obvious question is. It seems so obvious. It seems so obvious that our, our military adventurism is all about oil. But yet, 
it, it's taken it's taken so long for this to dawn on most Americans. When I when, the only time I met Al Gore, he was he was on his uh, book tour and then his movie tour for an Inconvenient Truth, and uh, I heard him speak in a small reception, and uh, he was saying, you know, look, John, he said. This uh, you're a hedge fund manager, he says, but you just don't get it. You're a bright guy, but you just don't get it. I don't know why people like you just don't get it. He said, uh, the, the, this war in Iraq is not about terrorism. It's not about fighting terrorism. It's not about weapons of mass destruction. It's about oil. And what you have to understand is that the oil reserves for Iran and Iraq put together are probably equal to or greater than that of Saudi Arabia. What you also have to understand is very easy to get the oil out of the ground. There's virtually no production cost. You can take a pipe and put it in the ground, and oil will flow out. So the production cost is about a dollar a barrel, which means if oil is selling for $146 a barrel, your profit is $145 a barrel. He said if you compare that to, like, say, uh, West Texas crude, where uh, you know we're uh, we're going to extraordinary lengths to uh, get a, a lousy barrel of oil out of tapped out wells, our production costs you know may be thirty or forty dollars a barrel, even more. Say with the the Canadian uh, oil sands, um, and that's eating big time into profit margins. Yeah, I, ab- yeah absolutely. Why yeah. aren't and he was wondering? He kept saying it was almost like a mantra. Why you know why don't you people get it? Well, see you can't. It's interesting. Even when people that I interviewed in Washington talked about oil as at the source of the wars, they that there's nothing wrong with that. See, that's in national interest. Uh, the country needs oil, so therefore, what's wrong with making sure that you have oil supplies? That's the way they look at it. What is the missing link there is, of course, who is going to provide those uh, the oil supplies? Is going to be U.S. oil companies who are going to make tons of extra profits, which of course we're seeing exactly what they're doing now. And it's to the detriment of people here who end up getting paying for, well, now practically $5 a gallon for gas. Um, that's the, so it's really for the profit of the oil companies. It has nothing to do with U.S. national interests. Uh, if the U.S. wanted to uh, make sure they had oil supplies, it could go to the international markets and buy the oil like everybody else. You know, Sweden and Switzerland don't have aircraft carriers in the Middle East, to make, and they have plenty of oil. Um, so... It's a, that, that's the real thing, and that's what they don't want to come out. That's why it has, the war in Iraq is about spreading democracy and the possible attack against Iran is because of their nuclear weapons. You just come up with all kinds of other reasons to disguise the reality. Well, Reese, plain devil's advocate here. This is Jay. Mm-hmm. Um, what, uh, pl- on the other side of this, isn't it, doesn't it make more sense to have uh, the world's top uh, technology and scientists actually doing this this uh, oil uh, drilling and, and and packaging like the U.S. is so good at? Um, mm-hmm. Well, that's the assumption is that the U.S. is the best in the world, and that's right. not necessarily true. Um, but how do you figure you know, Open it up to competitive bidding, you know? Uh. Let, let, <laughs> let the Russians and the Chinese and the Venezuelans and, and everybody else, uh, uh, the Iranians, you know, uh, bid and compare the contracts that they're offered and the pricing and the skill level and, you know, let the best company win. But, of course, the U.S. has absolutely no interest in allowing that to happen because if the Chinese or Russians or Iranians had uh, their companies in there drilling Iraqi oil, it wouldn't, the U.S. would worry that it wouldn't flow to the U.S. Well, in fact, they, they did. The Russians and the Chinese both had consultants yeah. in Iraq uh, helping, helping uh, as unpaid consultants to, to help with their oil tapping. Right, and but such. The, 